I'm encouraging everybody, by the way, to come down to uh, Nashville, Tennessee, and pay a visit to Fisk University. It's like a, a, an institution uh, that is so important to African American history and culture. It's yeah. definitely. I, I, I tell you, between the gallery and the library, that we are one of, in this country, uh, one of the most incredible repositories of the cultural production of people of the African diaspora. Yeah. For many reasons, uh, one because of the content, the contents and the history of the library. You know, if you think about Arturo Schomburg, before he would sell his, his collection to the New York Public Library, mm -hmm. he was building Fisk's rare book collection, buying manuscripts and archives, oh, wow. centered around a diaspora, a pre-emancipation outside of the U.S. Wow. Um, we talked a little bit about Douglas and Driscoll, but we didn't talk about Charles S. Johnson, who was the first African-American president of this. Ah. Uh, some would call him the kind of architect of the person behind the scenes of the Harlem Renaissance, but he was definitely a catalyst for our collections in many ways. When did he become president, by the way? Do you recall? 1946. 1946? He, 1946 to uh, 1957, when he, when he passed away. Uh -huh. uh, Coming back, either coming back on the way from a board meeting. Oh, wow. But he started in the 20s. He started in the 20s um, in the sociology department. You know, it's ironic to think about um, Charles S. Johnson being on the faculty who become president, but also, and also have an amazing collection at Fisk, but also Horace Mann Bond, I believe, well, I know he was on the faculty as well, who would go on to be president at Fort Valley and then also Lincoln. Uh -huh. um, when the Barnes collection yes. or the Barnes Foundation came to Lincoln. So it's just interesting that those two people were in the same space at the same time early in their career. That's incredible to think about. Yeah. Wow. And you mentioned yeah. Schomburg uh, actually helping to build the uh, uh, rare book collection. Rare yeah. book collection. I, yeah. I would tell anybody, if, you, if, if anytime you start following the breadcrumbs, all roads lead through Fisk. Yeah. Um, or you could always find a route back to the institution. I'll say more broadly, especially within a diaspora, uh, all roads lead back to an HBCU. Yes. But I'm sure that once you find the, the, any other perspective HBCU, there may be something linking it back to the institution as well. Yes. So. Yeah, that's, that's incredible to, to, to know for sure. <laughs> <laughs>